Last time on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage, oh. what I thought I would do is start a new series called Finish It Fridays. Now here we have this wonderful pink lady. Here we have the engine of our model kit and it is the DeSoto Fire Dome. I didn't really paint any of the inside or underneath pieces and they're supposed to glue on there and there to cover these two uh, gaps for the stock bumper. Now it doesn't show the side lights. Be oh, because the tail lights are back here. And now on to the show. The first thing I'm going to do to continue on this model is try to fit up these fenders with the pickup bed and get ready to attach the truck bed onto the actual frame. So what we have here is you'll notice the frame has these two little holes molded into it in the back. Now if I turn this over you'll see these two little pins right there. These are very important alignment pins so we're not going to cut them off or anything like that because you need them but you will have to remove the paint like my overspray here on the tips of the pins and it wouldn't hurt to actually remove a little bit from the base as well and then where the holes are you can just scrape off along the top here and use your little drill and just drill the paint out of the holes not enlarge the holes just get the paint out of there and we will also have to scrape the paint off right here and of course there and on this edge here and on this edge here and in my experience of building this truck that is enough to actually hold this whole truck bed right onto that frame so just align it here so here you can see the little pins are going to go into those holes like that and then just imagining this is fresh plastic to plastic right in that seam there. Now uh, when we glue it on, of course, it will uh, it actually sits really nice. I don't know if you want to, uh, you know, put a little weight in there, put a couple of bottles of paint, you know, in there just to hold it. Your little tester square bottles. Not only do they give enough weight, they're also the right shape to fit in there. Not too sure what to do with this uh, wood area. Maybe I should paint it white just uh, so it doesn't look so pink in here. It probably make a little bit of sense because the tonneau cover is also painted white. And of course underneath it'll have to paint this. I don't really want the... I mean, you know, let's just turn it upside down for a minute. I'll line this up. See, it doesn't look too good with overspray. I think I'll paint that gloss white as well, just to match this up. Okay, now um, the instructions are saying that when the truck bed is glued down, you want to glue the fenders on. Now you see this notch that's right there in the fender? Just uh, right here. That notch right there. That goes into this curve right there on your running boards and there's also a little pin on the back you'll see it it's just so slight right where my finger or thumbnail is that little pin right there <laughs> that's a stopping point for the back part of the fender so these are this is just a simple customizing thing just a glue on customizing so no need to uh, hack up the body or anything. So let's just grab the right fender. So what we have there is whoop, the right fender. So now if this goes on, just having a little hand alignment issue. <laughs> uh, and it's not going to behave on film naturally. Okay. Get in that little hole there. Stuff never really works well on a dry run. Okay, so there's that notch going into the curve right there. And then, I don't know how well you can see this, but there's a little pin and it will rest right on the bottom of the pickup box, which in this case being upside down is the top. So it'll rest right on the top of that pickup box. So you could do one of two things. You could scrape the paint for plastic-to-plastic -plastic contact right up in that curve, but it doesn't really look like the curve 
fits too well. I don't know. Uh, it might work with the tester's tube glue as a bit of a filler glue, if you know what I mean. And then the other thing is to take the back of your hobby knife and carefully just go along that edge where the fender is, you know, mounted to the box. Just go along that edge just to get a line. And then once you have the line in there, just scrape a little under the line to expose the plastic. And then on the other side of this fender, right across the top here, and maybe going down a little bit, you can get rid of the paint that's on there. Just sand it down a little touch with your sandpaper block just to expose the bare plastic here. And then carefully add a bit of glue to the edge. And once it's all plastic to plastic, when you put it on the pickup truck box, it'll cover your scraped off line right in there. And uh, you'll be able to glue this fender right on. In just a matter of a few minutes, I was able to sand the back of the fender right here. This is what I was talking about. So there's the paint removed. It's a little bit of a low spot right where this uh, pink paint still exists. But I did sand this with a sandpaper block. So that's below the sanding of the sandpaper block. So then, like I said, I lined up the fender. I attached it all into the uh, truck like that. And then I found out where the fender was going to line up, and I scratched that line in there. And when I glue this all together, the fender will cover that line. And then, in order to glue it together, I'll have the fender pressed against the uh, truck, the truck bed like that. And I can run some liquid glue on the inside in here very carefully. And the liquid glue will go in between the two pieces of plastic and weld it right there where there is the plastic to plastic contact surface. So that's how to, how you do this sort of thing. Just uh, be careful, take your time. And like I said, I had that on the frame rails and I very carefully held my finger in so everything was together. And I took the back of my knife blade and went in there just to etch the line in. Then once I had the top of the line, which is up there, I just took my number 16 hobby blade and made the line a little thicker. Just scraped it down and uh, there we go. It should make the good plastic to plastic contact. I started to glue on the fender and I realized that just scraping it along the top wasn't enough of a contact surface for this because it wanted to uh, open up toward the bottom. So what I did was I took the fender again and just put it on and uh, lined it up with the car and scraped away along the edges as well as up and underneath right into there then applied a little bit of glue like on the end of one of these sticks and just went down it like that and that and across like that actually more like this gave a nice little snail trail of glue along the edge and then was able to put the fender into place now the testers red glue that I used along the edges was thick enough. It's cement. So then I was able to uh, just take a little bit of the brush with the liquid glue and go in there once the cement had sort of started to take effect and held the fender on as tight as I could. And then it ended up gluing on like this on the other side. You can see how nice that is. Remember I aligned this with the running boards and then the little pin on the back. Just touching and sitting right there, just where it's supposed to, right in there. <laughs> so now what I would have to do is paint the bottom white, and then I'm going to have to paint the edges inside here with the pink, so it looks like the painted pink steel, and uh, glue the fender on the other side. Here's the grill in the grill surround, and what I did was I just sanded off all the lumpy bumpies that are up on the top here. I'm sure your kit has them. And I left the front part with the kit chrome, so I was very careful on how I sanded this using my big old sanding block. I also just sanded the back just a little bit just to get the chrome off of those points because these bars are where they're going to connect in with the front 
you know, opening. Oh, I also sanded the lumpy bumpies off of here. This is where it was connected to the parts tree. So I will take my Molotol chrome pen and just go on there and there. Maybe across here too. I'm not too sure if I'm going to chrome that or leave or you know paint it black or something just so that the grill is actually out here. I'll have to think about that one. Maybe uh, stylistically it would be better if it was chromed. I don't know. What do you think? Well, <laughs> I'm going to build this before you get a chance to reply. <laughs> anyway, but there is a bit of an advantage. You see on the back here where it's got this V? That's where it goes in the body over there. But right at the top of the V, where that top bit of the bar is, you can see that that is also where the little bar here is. So you'll need the back of your hobby blade and just carefully maybe go like this. Just the distance of that bar, bar to bar. And now you can imagine there you've got the little scrape right there and you would just take your knife and scrape st straight down, straight down scrape. And once you get the bare plastic in there, it should be in the right location for this one here. And I do believe there's enough length in here that that alone would support the uh, entirety of the grill. Because you're not really pulling on the grill or anything like that, so it wouldn't fall out. And that is good. I'm going to have to clean this with some soap and water. I noticed there's some, like, hard dust in here from it sitting, you know, face up in a box like this for so long. The chrome parts tree, I mean. So that'll be having to be cleared out. You could also paint in here with a little bit of a wash. You could even paint gold in here just around the headlights. That might be kind of cool because some of those 60s cars like the uh, 60 Ford Starliner, those had sort of a gold in there or however it went. You could also do a bit of a black wash in here. It might be hard to uh, wipe the grill off. This is a mesh grill inside here so be a challenge for Pete to open that up. be pretty cool to see but like I say it's a mesh one. Well I guess he could just cut all that out and glue a mesh on the back. Leave the four bars in there. <laughs> but at any rate, um, this is how I'm doing it, and uh, I think it should look pretty good. Here's our pickup truck bed with those cool fenders installed, and you can see just how nice they look. In fact, that looks really good. The only issue I have with my own paint job, of course I had to scrape a little bit away here, so it needs a little touch-up right in there. But I noticed, remember I said on the inside there was fish eyes in that, in the paint job? Well, I notice they're also up under here along that ridge. Kind of hard to see now, but I think I will have to just take a paintbrush and carefully go along there. Sort of pinstripe it in with the original color. Now here I got the tailgate as well as the rear rolled pan and these little uh, bars for our tailgate to latch into. Now the issue with the bars is that they have mold marks on the back, but We'll have to remove those with our hobby knife and our sandpaper as well. Just get rid of those mold marks <laughs> because that's what's going to make this fit nice and flat up against there. Well, that one. And the other thing I noticed is, remember how I said that you got these Corvette chrome inner uh, sunken in bits sort of thing? And that there's supposed to be a tail light that goes in there. See, like that. Well, I discovered where the tail light is. It's not actually on the clear parts tree, it's on the chrome parts tree. And it's these little th circles right here. If you turn them over, you can see a little bullet. And it is interesting because a chrome piece is going to glue into a chrome piece. Oh, and one other thing I noticed here, which. <laughs> Is really bad is there are sink marks right there and right there on the inner part of that uh, sunken in bit right there and uh, that's kind of a, <laughs> a 
a bad spot. It would have been better if they had molded these the other way around and had the mold mark on the back that we could just file off because all this chrome here is getting removed. That would be kind of interesting. Glue this in this way. And just have this chrome bullet thing sitting on the bottom of the uh, rear fender. That would be interesting. <laughs> and then go and use the stock taillights on the bottom of those... Uh, little holders there. <laughs> Instead, the stock circular tail lights. No, I don't know. I think I'll try to uh, put the chrome in there and we'd have to scrape the chrome off of inside here, just a little bit of it, in order to get that glue to glue contact. But overall this looks good. Now one thing I did notice is this little back rolled pan, it goes on a specific way. You can see how it's uh, long here, but short this way. You want to make sure that you're not gluing the short part down, because if you look at the side, that rolled pan goes right off the bottom very far down. It actually goes this way onto the long side. So you can see the rolled pan now is underneath the bottom of the fenders. And there's another little issue, but this is sort of re easily resolved. So remember how there were the little alignment pins there and there and uh, on the inside of the fenders just to make it sit on the back? So <laughs> they actually interfere with this rolled pan just on the edges when you try to put it together. So what I'm going to do is just now that the fenders are glued on solid and that's why we glued them on in the three points is I can now take my knife here and just push down on this and get rid of that pin. And then the one on the other side. Whoops, <laughs> not slice the fender off, which I just kind of almost did. <laughs> A little more glue will be required in that area. Okay, so now Now I can get that to go down completely flat and touch there, except my fingers are in the way from behind. And that's how it's supposed to be, but you can see there's a big gap in there. So one thing to do about that is just take our sandpaper block. We're going to have to uh, sand down here. Just machine this surface just a little bit with the sandpaper. Okay, so now it should go a little tighter. But there's still a bit of a distortion along the bottom of this rolled pan. So if we did that for the one piece of this, for the inner truck bed, you can also just sand this down for the rolled pan. The nice part is I'm sanding where it's going to glue, so that's a bonus. And uh, one thing, maybe I should have glued the fenders on and then painted the truck bed. That might have been an easier way to do things, but like I say, I'm picking up from where I left off. And I don't know when I left off, because <laughs> I never wrote any notes. So we're just going with the flow. And uh, carrying on. Now you can see there's still a few little low spots in the corners, but we are getting there, and now this should. Uh, my butter fingers here. It should be getting a tighter fit right along there. There's a little bit of a notch on that one corner. I guess I could sand it down just a little bit more. But yeah, it's starting to fit flush. You notice that the ends of this actually droop down a little bit, and that's a that low sp spot. So just uh, keep sanding this until it touches nice and flat, and then it should be uh, a pretty, almost seamless bond right across there, and that'll be nice. Just as a little common sense tip, when you're gluing these little pieces onto the side of the truck, of course, you're going to want to remove a bit of the paint for that plastic-to-plastic -plastic contact. 
and I've done that on the back right there but that's not the common sense part <laughs> the common sense part is seeing first off that this tailgate oops this tailgate is sunken in here and down there and not on this side here so the side that is not sunken in is the top so that is common sense bit number one see how nice that uh, works out there then common sense number two is that you glue don't glue both of these on and then try to get the tailgate in because it's not going to happen so glue one side on first then making sure you got those notches in the right spot just slip your tailgate through the little hole down there there we go and then put the other one on on the other side after this one is glued solid so that you trap the tailgate in between the two because if you've got that side glued on you will break the pins off trying to get it in those holes I removed the little mold mark from inside the uh, rear chrome pieces and I also discovered that there is a whole bunch of mold garbage right into here and here on our little uh, tail light inserts so I really had to scrape them all down but I did get them to fit nicely into the sides of the fenders now you notice I left the chrome perimeter up around in here what I could do is either paint all inside here with a molotol chrome or I could just paint it with testers gold and leave the uh, chrome edge and I think I might do that now for that plastic to plastic contact you'll see that I did scrape off the back of these as well as inside here and even on the end on the inside and another idea here is with those little tiny taillights because they're so small like you can see there they will have to be painted with a you know red inside there but what I did was while they're still on the parts tree I scraped the chrome off the back of them there and there and that is just so I don't have to you know cut these out and hold them with my bare fingers which is really hard to do and then scrape the back off which is a guarantee that this is going to go flying off somewhere and you'll never see it again so that is another little tip here's another thought take your little tail lights and stick them down onto a piece of tape and then you've got something there that will hold these tail lamps when you paint them with the turn signal red here's our tail lights after a bit of that red paint and you can see that they already look better and I can't wait to put them into the reflectors back here and that housing again looking good with the gold and speaking of gold here is the front grille and now you can see the gold inserts in there here's the before and after for the window glass so what I did is I cut off this runner with the saw and then filed down that edge and then I cut out the four headlights that are up here and I dragged my knife blade across the back of this little tag that's sticking out and then snipped off these and then filed it and filed out the mold marks and ended up with this result on this side.